here we are with Stephen Knight, um, who wrote and directed Lock. Um, this is for the MacGuffin. Uh, and we're going to discuss a little bit about the film. I saw it last night for the first time. I missed it when it was at the Dallas mm -hmm. Film Fest. Um, I really wanted to discuss, um, like, where did this idea came from? Mm. Yeah, it was, I'd just come off the back of filming a more conventional film and wondered if it wasn't possible to make a film in a different way. Um, and in the process of making that film, we tested the digital cameras by shooting from moving vehicles. Mm -hmm. And I found that test footage quite hypnotic and beautiful when you shoot it at night. And um, I wondered if you could turn that into a theatre, put an actor into the theatre and, and shoot effectively a play. And it was a question of getting together a lot of people who work in conventional filmmaking, who were the best at their craft, mm -hmm. pretty much in every case, and saying to them, let's have a vacation from what we normally do and let's have some fun. Yeah. So, I mean, what was the setup like for this? I mean, basically, it's Tom Hardy in a car. Mm. Um, did you ha Was he actually driving, or did you have him on a sort of a mechanism? I mean, at some stages, he's driving for real. But most of the time, uh, we put the car, took the wheels off the car, put it onto a low-loader truck, mm -hmm. uh, put three cameras in the car, and had the other actors in a conference room in a hotel with some red wine and biscuits, and <laughs> opened a phone line from the hotel to the car so the phone calls are real. Okay. I would say action once. We would start shooting. I would cue the actors in the conference room to come to the phone line in sequence, and we'd shoot the whole film from the beginning to the end, take a break, shoot it again, take a break. Oh, shoot my God. Yeah, we, we, we shot 16 versions of the film, which we then took to the edit suite and, and cut together the best bits so that was why you know a lot of people joined joined us in this endeavor because it was doing something in a, in a sort of almost naive way yeah and it threw up certain problems which everybody relished and, and you know we've, we've sorted out our, our solutions it was very low budget most people did it for virtually nothing and it's great to see that it's had such a reaction. Yeah. Well, in my review, I, I said, you know, it would have been more difficult if Tom Hardy was just reacting to someone reading off a screenplay. Mm. So I think, yeah, it definitely, I think it would it would help an actor to actually hear the voices mm. Mm. rather than someone just randomly reading off oh, you know, absolutely. a screenplay. Yeah. So everyone was basically in on it, you yeah. know, like they were sitting there waiting for their yeah, scene, exactly. basically. So exactly. it was kind of like a play. Yeah, you did absolutely. 16 times. Absolutely. Just a little more complicated. Yeah, it was sort of blurring the lines between the two. And really, you know, what I'm most interested in is getting performance onto the screen. And the rest of it, I'm not so interested. And, and the great thing about the reaction to this film is that people who watch it forget they haven't seen the other characters because the audience is obliged to invent those characters for themselves visually because they never yeah. see them but I think it's what people automatically do you hear a voice you hear the dog bark and you hear the TV in the background you make that picture yourself um, to the extent that some people who've seen it insist they have seen yeah. <laughs> the other characters so did you make the actor who did Donald go run a few laps yes <laughs> I didn't make him. He, he volunteered to do. It. It's the only the only way to be out of breath is to yeah. Be out of breath. So yeah. So he was running on the spot a lot. Oh, nice. Um, so how did you get the other actors involved with this? Even though it was just a, a voice part, basically. I know. I, I didn't think we'd get the caliber of actor that we yeah, got. Yeah, Ruth Wilson. I, I mean, come on. They're the best. Pretty much the best actors we've got in yeah. the UK, and it it helps when you're only asking them for eight days, not eight weeks of their lives um, they wanted to work with Tom and they were interested in this project that we were all doing and it's one of those things where the best people seem almost more willing to get because they weren't getting paid a, hardly anything yeah. it was mostly done for you know, for the fun of it really Yeah. Um, but the best people are interested in this sort of thing so it helped to get this this repertory company together and we sat around for five days reading the scripts and rehearsing mm -hmm. and doing character work and then that was it we, we, we went on the road and shot it wow um, 
I want to talk about his accent mm-hmm. because I, I don't think that's his normal accent because no, no. I've heard him talk normally before. So his accent was very specific, mm-hmm. kind of like I had described it kind of like professor like very mm-hmm. he enunciates his words. Mm-hmm. So where did that come from? The accent is it's a Welsh accent. OK, um, we wanted him to be plausibly from a poor background, from a okay. working class background. And most British accents are quite harsh and hard to understand for a worldwide audience. Yep. But Welsh is one of those accents, for some reason, that um, is quite calming, it's quite lyrical and quite poetic. Mm-hmm. And so it was the perfect accent uh, to, to execute this. And Tom listened to uh, Richard Burton okay. reading Under Milk Wood a lot to get the accent. But the, he, Tom doesn't normally do accents, he does people. So he will get someone who speaks like that and do them. And I, you know, we, we talked about the Ivan being solid and and practical and calm. And so he picked someone he knew who was like that, and he did his accent, believing him to be Welsh. Yeah. However, he subsequently found that because that person was contacted by a Welsh newspaper, and he found out he wasn't Welsh at all. So <laughs> it was quite. Funny. In fact, we were in New York doing the junket, doing the publicity, and when, yeah. when he found out that. The newspaper phoned him up and said, he's not Welsh. I said, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like working with Tom? He's I brilliant. mean, he's an up-and-coming actor. I mean, he mm. already is, like, one of my favorite actors mm. already, just from Warriors. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, he's done some BBC stuff, Masterpiece mm. Theatre, I mm. love. So, I mean, how he's such a rising star right now. How mm. what hard was it to get him involved in this? It was, it was, uh, this was a project where... You know, I've done st- enough projects where things don't go this smoothly, but this was one where everything seemed to happen quite quickly and quite mm-hmm. easily. And I'd had the idea and knew wh- who the character would be, and then I had a meeting with Tom about something completely different. And in the process of that conversation, I talked about this idea, and he really loved it because he loves theatre and he likes the idea of blurring the distinction. Yeah. And so when I wrote it, I was pretty sure that he would do it. And uh, th- we met in November and we were shooting it by February. So it was incredible. Oh, wow. Um, so, I mean, this is basically, it's not hit everywhere in the U.S. yet. Um, I know it opened here today in Dallas. Um, my friend said Seattle next week. Yes, that's right. Um, I mean, what are your hopes for this film? Well, it's, it's done incredibly well in the, at the box office yeah. um, in L.A. and New York. And I'm really pleased that it's not being considered sort of an art house out there mm-hmm. sort of experimental film because people are not responding to the way it was made but to the character and yeah. to the issues that it raises of responsibility and the, the, the relationships all of those things that people when the lights go up at the end are quite emotional about what yeah. they've seen and I think the word the, the word of mouth on this is so good because people talk about it and they think about it afterwards because it gives people something to think about which I think this is what we need from from cinema I think. yeah um, I could just uh, mention something else mm-hmm. I'm pretty keen on seeing Peaky Blinders oh, is that yeah, how yeah, you yeah. say it Peaky Blinders As, yeah. I don't think it's even over here yet no. and Tom's supposed to be in the ne- this season um, Killian Murphy uh, Tom and Killian together are mate. oh god see now I'm, I'm jealous I, I really want to move to England and <laughs> just um, to see that no, I mean just in general. I love it over there. I mean, what was that experience like with it that was show? Amazing. I mean, it was great because I, I was I'd written I think five of the six episodes already, and I was working on the sixth one. And there's a character that was already written, and I thought Tom would be good at, and just almost for a laugh said, "Do you want to read this? And uh-huh. do you want to be in it?" And he said, "Yeah." And so. He and Killian have a couple of, I think they're about five minute scenes together. Uh-huh. And he's in, Tom is in five of the six episodes, so it's great. I mean, it's really good to be just doing stuff, you know, uh, and having the freedom to be able to experiment with all kinds of things. Yeah. So, I mean, TV, film, I mean, I mean, uh, you wrote this, I mean, and you've written the films and then you've not directed. Mm-hmm. So why, what made you want to direct this one specifically? I think um, whenever you write a film, you get the film is in your head, yeah. written and lit and performed perfectly. And then you have to bring it into the world. And that's where the problem begins. And so I think the 
the motivation to direct is to try and get a film as close to the film that's in your head as possible onto the screen. And of course, it's never possible to to do it exactly like that. But you just try and get as close as you can. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you. Looking forward to this spreading all over the US, mm. getting good reviews. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>